Hello and welcome back to Forgotten Front. Today we're going to be doing the first of the French scenarios, called The Emperor's Plan, where we take command of Baudouin's Brigade, making the first attacks on Hougamont. Just like in the last game, this game is also modified, except this time I have a mod for the right order so that I actually work properly. As well as I have updated the Grog's Toolbar, which is apparently extremely out of date, so it's safe to say we'll be seeing some new effects in the battlefield this scenario. Now unfortunately for this scenario, there's not a lot that I can really talk about because there wasn't a lot of history in the several books I read, which include... Basically all they say about the attack of Baldwin's brigade is that while well, he was part of the 6th division of the 2nd corps, he led the attack with the skirmishers, and he died. That's, that's, all, they, they, that's all they said, unless there's, unless there's a book about the defense of Hugamon that I'm unaware of that probably puts him in greater detail, which I don't own. That's really it, though I will go into the history anyway, so you still have that to look forward to later on. And without further ado, the history or what I can find. If you don't want to hear the scenario's history, a time should be appearing on your screen. Wait for it. Don't move. Now! With the opening of the Battle of Waterloo at 11.30, Napoleon put his plan into action to defeat Wellington. The starting point of his plan was to deplete Wellington's reserves in his center through two methods. The first was by shelling his center with a grand battery, and the other more well-known part was through attacking the Chateau of Goumont, or Hougamont, to draw Wellington's center reserve to support the Chateau. To do this, he used the men from the 6th Division under his brother, Jerome Bonaparte, of Riley's 2nd Corps. The attack in battle opened with a half-hour artillery duel between the guns of both armies, the grand battery focusing on the center, and Riley... Riley's artillery on, the, on and around Hougamont, and the attack began with a brigade of Baudouin and skirmishers, their flank guarded by Pierre's cavalry division. This attack will test Riley's earlier quote about the British light infantry. Welcome back to those of you who didn't want to view the history. We're with Baudouin's brigade outside of Hougamont, awaiting the orders du jour. And here comes a courier with them now. Mon General, General Riley has given us the honor of opening the attack on the Allied right. We are to advance and clear the orchard to our front. He advises us strongly in the use of skirmishers to do this task, before capturing the chateau with infantry. We start off the scenario with three skirmishers broken off from one of our battalions, which has spread along the hedgerows to the east of the orchard. The jump cut you just saw was me editing out a pop-up for a tutorial on how to use skirmishers, which was a new feature when this game came out. I then moved the parent battalion to support the skirmishers' flank, before going back to the other battalions in my brigade and telling them to take cover as they'll come under heavy cannon fire. Now take note of the leftmost battalion that I tell to take cover. Now that my skirmishers have gathered on the east side of the orchard, they come under fire as the first shots in the Battle of Waterloo are fired by the Nassau Light Infantry. There, men! Look those trees to your front! Fire upon the men when they move from the cover of the trees! Eager to get my troops out of the open and into the cover of the orchard, I move my skirmishers to the edge of the orchard. In the meantime, to the left of your screen, you can see the effect of one of the mods I've downloaded, called Bloodbath Waterloo, which adds a pool of blood next to the corpses for more realism. Later on, we'll get a closer look at the effects of this mod. Now we can see the parent battalion of the skirmishers going towards its intended target of the Guard Light Companies on the left flank of the chateau, before we return to the skirmishing between our skirmishers and the Dutch Jaeger and Nassau Light Companies. Here's a bit where I zoom in and examine the blood pools caused by the Bloodbath Waterloo mod. It also has more visible bullet impacts. In the background you can see that Riley's artillery is supporting us as it bombards the other Nassau light infantry. Moving back to our lines. I move up the parent battalion to attack the first of the guard light companies. Right now I'm trying to give you an overview of the situation, getting both the parent battalion in frame as well as the skirmishing in the woods.
Eventually, I give up my patience and rush the parent battalion into position to deal with the light companies on our flank, just to the right of Huguenot. I zoom up nice and close to show you a small little detail that I noticed while playing this campaign. That the second rank shifts so it can fire over the first rank shoulder, which is a cool little detail. And the firefight at my left begins with the guard company felling a few of my soldiers before we open fire. We fire a few volleys before we, we fire in advance. Battalion! Fire in advance! Tristan Hendricks! Come on, the guardsmen! Bullets do not carry when they strike! As our troops fire in advance, I use our secret weapon, a barrage of bugles, to cover our advance into the hedgerows. Moving back to the skirmish in the woods, the Dutch Jaeger are taking massive casualties. Moving back to the bugle battalion, while they advance towards the hedgerow, they are simultaneously weakening the guard's light company. But without the cover of their bugles, they take heavy casualties in that zone. So eventually, I tell them to move to the hedges at the double, where their fire will be more deadly at close range. glance in the skirmishing in the woods, I noticed that it made no progress. So I looked back to the parent battalion, which in a short time has made remarkable progress of taking out the entire guard light company's first rank. And making note of their depleted state, I charged them. These troops are the only barrier between us and capturing the chateau, so we are bayonets. And charge! Pull on her! Screaming like banshees, my men burst from the hedgerows, charging the severely depleted guard light company, taking a few casualties here and there as they rush the company. But as they arrive, the elite guard light company counter charge, despite the overwhelming odds. However, they are quickly forced back and forced to surrender. Overconfident after the quick success against the first guard light company, I charged the other non depleted light company, taking much more severe casualties. They return the charge and quickly push back my troops, stabbing a few men in the back as they run. Making sure that my men will rally, I quickly shift the camera away in disgust to the skirmishing in the orchard, where I decided to apply more pressure against the enemy light companies by moving my troops up. However, my troops decide to not go as far as I want them to go up. And so I can see them form a line slightly lower down the slope. Shifting back to the Bugle Battalion, they have reformed, but they are under fire from their last guard light company. So I face their line towards them and open fire. But unsatisfied with just a shootout with a guard light company, I decide to reform for another charge. Van 
Racing under another barrage of bugles. Shifting back to the skirmishing in the woods, by this point it's obvious that moving my skirmishers up made a massive effect as the Dutch Jaeger and the and the two battalions of Nassau light infantry have taken heavy casualties until the Dutch Jaegers break and retreat. And MacDonald moves in to quickly rally the Nassau light infantry. By this point I send in Baudouin, even though there's a slight chance of him getting shot. I think it's worth it to inspire the skirmishers to more effectiveness. Shifting back to the parent battalion of the skirmishers, I make my first blunder by telling them to charge, but unknowingly I still have Budwin selected, which means all units within range of the enemy under his command will charge. But in comes my battalion, yelling like furies as they advance towards the enemy the double, with bayonets fixed and Moving over to the perspective of the guard light company, we can see the impossible odds faced against them. Regardless, being men of honor, they countercharge. However, my troops be were able to force them back and capture their entire company, thus avenging their previous experience. The men have the bugle call to the charge, and in the chaos of the fighting orchard, some thought of a zero and called the others. Others followed them, until all three skirmish companies charged the enemy. Looking back to the skirmishing in the orchard, to see if I can take advantage of the freed up troops I have, I realize my blunder. As the skirmishers who moved up, who are not supposed to be used for melee, surprisingly enough, are forced back. Which in retrospect is kind of ballsy, with General Baldwin being there. Because I know in the British Army that's a flogging, if not a hanging offense, to run in front of the enemy. I'm not sure about the French Army. In the meantime, the parent battalion is opening fire upon the chateau itself, with the Grenadiers garrison in it. And so I move them to support the skirmishers' flank in the woods. Meanwhile, Baldwin has rallied the skirmishers. However, being disorganized and still under fire, they don't stand for long. Except for one company. In the meantime, the parent brigade has halted again to attempt to fire upon the chateau, and so I, I tell them, forcefully this time, to move into the orchard at the double. In the meantime, Bodwin rallies the rest of his skirmishers, who I quickly tell to form up with the other company. With so few troops in the orchard, McDonald's brigade is not going to hold for much longer without support. And the parent battalion arrives to support our flank, which I send forward to engage with the last of the Nassau Light Infantry. In the meantime, I tell the rest of my skirmishers to form a cohesive line. Under the stress of such immense fire, the NASA Light Infantry's numbers begin to melt away. But you can see they're trying to fire in advance themselves. But eventually the casualties become too immense for them, and they are forced back. And so in a desperate last stand, McDonald moves in the troops of the 1st Hanoverian Brigade. But piecemeal, 
and so I'm able to hold my ground and take them out one at a time. It was not war, it was murder, or something like that, as they advance, not firing a shot against us. One brigade retreats under the stress of fire from our skirmishers and Riley's artillery. The other soon breaks as well. And so Baudouin sends his report back to Jerome Bonaparte. You send this report to General Bonaparte, but the order is clear, and this to the rest of the battalions, to move up and to prepare to attack the chateau. With the last of the Allied resistance cleared in the wood, I move up the rest of my brigade. In preparation for this, MacDonald earlier moved up skirmishers into the hedgerow, just in front of the chateau, and so the rest of my battalions get out from taking cover, most not taking any damage except for the farthest left one, which took seven casualties. Unfortunately, that battalion will have to face the cannon fire once again as it crosses the open ground until it reaches the orchard. As the last of my battalions move into position, the battalions in the orchard itself form a really weird formation, and I don't really know why, as Baldwin is on take command. Eventually I move the formation over slightly so I can go closer to the victory point in order to take victory points. As the battle now is going to get really bloody, as the only thing standing in our way is the chateau itself. As I move closer to our advancing battalions, I zoom in close up to the far left brigade as it dodges incoming cannonballs, except for one poor fellow who catches one. In the meantime, I look at the allied battalions on their right flank. With hope of getting a few more points, I rush Baldwin close to the command point, as there are a few battalions and companies nearby the point. And sure enough, it's enough to actually hold the point. In the meantime, I move up my skirmishers to begin to exchange fire with the Nassau light infantry in front of the chateau, which has another effect to cover the other battalions as they get into position. However, I can only find two. Later on, I find the last one which is in a really weird spot. With the brigade now forming up in the woods, a courier message is sent to General Bonaparte to ask permission to attack the chateau. 
General Bonaparte, the chateau to our front is heavily fortified and garrisoned. How shall we proceed? General Baldwin, move your battalions and surround and capture the chateau to your front. With orders from High Command to take the chateau, I open the map to make sure that all my forces are forward. While doing so, I notice that one of the skirmishers are, are hiding in the back, and so I move them to join the other ones, who are engaging the Nassauers in front of the chateau. I move them up at the double, despite how tired they are, as a punishment for shirking their duties. In the meantime, I get the rest of our reserves and form them into lines that are more organized and supporting our flanks. Here we can see the Nassauers will be no easy target as they are hiding in the hedgerows with MacDonald in support. I contemplate moving up one of the larger brigades to deal with the mass hours, but I decide against it in the end, instead increasing the pressure with my skirmishers by moving them to a closer range. However, they do it reluctantly, and I need to order them several times. As they advance, they take some severe casualties. Eventually, I decided this would take too many casualties and time, and so I decided to dislodge them with infantry by threatening their flank. Initially, I wanted to use one of the larger battalions, but later on, I decided to use one of the smaller ones. As to save the larger battalions to aid in capturing Hugemont. Likewise, I support my other flank with the parent battalion of the skirmishers. However, I'm wary of wrapping too far around the flanks of Hugemont, as my men can be easily blasted back by the Allied artillery. Despite their overwhelming odds, MacDonald and the Nassau Light Infantry hold out. I held with some of the Nassauers from the walls, just in front of the chateau, to delay the French until our reinforcements arrived. Deciding that this firefight will not be advantageous to our troops in any way, as the enemy are in heavy cover and reinforced, I think about a way to end it quickly. thinking about this, I move up reserves to take position to attack the chateau after the Nassauers are dispersed. You can see that my men are taking heavy casualties in front of the chateau. At this time, I decide to save time and casualties by moving up the small line battalion on my left flank to rush and threaten the Nassau's flank so they would retreat into the chateau itself. However, in retrospect, this is probably a bad idea as they had less cover out in the open and I could have charged them.
and as a close pursuit of the French, the retiring troops fell back around the right of the building and parked with the left between the garden wall and the orchard and the orchard hedge. We can see my plan works amazingly as the Nassau's retreat. I take advantage of their shifting opposition by shooting them as I return to the chateau, catching them in the dead ground between the orchard and the chateau walls, then inflicting a few casualties. As the Nassau light infantry retreat into the chateau itself, I move up my skirmishers into the hedgerows where they once were. At the same time, Major Busson moves his troops from, from the left flank of Hugamon into the walls to attempt to counterattack. Moving my skirmishers into the hedgerow just in front of the chateau is immensely risky, as the troops on the chateau walls have an extreme cover bonus. That's why I only decide to commit the parent battalion and the skirmishers to our left flank, as well as danger from the artillery. They had scarcely taken up positions at the loopholes when the masses of French came up to the woods, all the intent of capturing the farm, but they were too late. The shallow balls were loosed off on the French, it were so terrible, the grass was soon covered with French corpses. With the Nassau light infantry out of the way from the front of the chateau, I move up the rest of my reserves to prepare to capture the chateau itself, while some units like the small battalion on our left opens fire on the chateau starting its capture, while my skirmishers distract the troops in the walls. Not knowing where Major Busson's troops went, my troops on the left with the, the small parent battalion, and then they become visible, moving to attack our right. So I turn them about as Major Busson's troops attack over the dead ground. The firefight just outside the walls is very costly for our skirmishers. small line battalion in front of the gates it is not facing the right way, and so I shift their position, as well as moving in a larger line battalion in reserve. The battle seems even, and I'm moving up more reserves. Major Boosin's troops are taking heavy casualties and stand in the open ground between the orchard and the walls of the chateau, ironically the same open ground that would halt the French from capturing the chateau in real life. Originally I thought it was the skirmishers causing the damage, later on I realized it's a line infantry.
casualties become too severe for some of my skirmishers who retreat away from the firefight. However, they'll be the only ones retreating from the firefight. Major Goosen's troops attempt to advance, but after taking heavy casualties, halt. Then they make another attempt to move forward in the absolute hail of fire. But again, they don't get very far before they stop. With me firing organized volleys into their ranks, it's a little effect. You can see in the back, my larger line battalions are attempting to fire, but they have no line of sight, so they're not actually shooting. See Goose's troops absolutely melt under the extreme fire that they're pouring upon them. But then something interesting happens. The chateau begins to shoot back at much higher volumes than it was originally. I look at the flags on top of the chateau, showing its garrison and I become actually concerned, as the third foot guard have moved in to garrison the chateau. This scenario has become a lot tougher. There my lads, in with you. Let me see no more of you. If anyone can hold that farmhouse, it's you, lads. Your reputation confirms it. I don't really do very much as the guards come in, as I don't want to have too many casualties by the end of this battle. Major Bushman's troops are taking huge amounts of casualties. As I go over which guardian is in the dark chateau, the cold stream are third, and I just find out it's the third. So I commit one of my larger line battalions to support. So I send another line battalion to support my left flank. I'm scared to commit the other one, as it would come under heavy artillery fire and probably would be forced back with heavy casualties. The firefight outside in the dead ground between the orchard and the walls continued as Major Boosie's troops take heavy casualties and thus their morale has been lowered significantly so McDonald has moved out to support them. until they fall back. And so I send units forward to attempt to force a capture of the walls. But then, victory. We won a major victory with 1850 points, though our casualties were pretty high. Now I'm gonna go over the troops' losses and kills for both sides. This time I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently, as I'm going to be covering only the infantry. I'm not messing around with the artillery, as that takes far too long to track down every single unit, which has useless time, which makes this video look much longer than it really is. So we've done pretty okay, with one of our units making 563 kills, which I believe is the parent regiment of the skirmishers, taking about all the points of their skirmishers. I also blame the Allied units in heavy cover as the reason for many of my heavy casualties. I guess one way to lower the casualties in this scenario is taking the entire brigade and just telling them to just charge. I'll, cap I'll capture the orchard pretty damn quick and get a pretty fast high score. But that wouldn't really be right. It might be interesting to try. And now on to the British troops. 
that we know have done pretty badly with minus 116 and other units going from minus 50 to nearly minus 80. And now for another episode of what I'm calling Adventures in Time! Episode 3 to be precise. The other episodes on the Spirit of War Get Expert Let's Play at the end, just like in these videos. resources, increased prices of coal and wood throughout the Empire, strikes and the threats of unionization threatens the gathering of these crucial resources, threatening to drive prices even higher, forcing the people of London to work longer and harder than ever. What does Her Majesty's government plan to do to remedy this? Mr. Speaker, we have planned a solution for this for some time and have come up with an organization to help to oversee the colonies and industrial areas of Britain, particularly the laborers, looking for anyone who slows production with malice towards the realm. These knights of the realm will help to counter threats, internal, such as internal threats through strikes and terrorist attacks and organization, as well as outer threats, like spies trying to draw us into the Great War or towards revolution. Workers, disperse and return to your duties, in the name of the sword. Damn the sword, she's brought us nothing but hardship. Who are you? You are not the nice to be here. Oh, but who are you? Not. Oh, I beg your pardon, sirs. Now, we shall talk to you. Subjects, return to your homes or face the consequences of your betrayal. Subjects, who are you to address us like that? We're officials from Her Majesty's government. Well, that's just too bad. We don't recognize the queen. She brought us nothing but ruin to the land and death to our families. So I must ask you to leave the United Workers Republic of even at force of arms. So be it. You have an hour to surrender, or you will face the full force of Her Majesty's special forces. Comrades, see how the Christ government treats our former citizens, destroys our families, works us to death with our ships, and destroys our land with its industry, and all for its own gain. Ah! They've killed him! Ah! Somebody put him a flag to surrender! Ah! I knew all this bitch would get us into trouble! We can catch me with us so close to get something! Use our ships if we have to! They aren't stopping! Defend with what you have! Into the mine! Ah! Get the people of the nearby village to clean this up as a lesson for those who wish to rebel. Monitor the village for extra needs. Anyone who mentions the Knights of the Realm is to be arrested for treason. Thank you for watching Forgotten Fronts. I've been Jeremy. I would be very appreciative if you would like and share this video to help the channel grow. And comment on what you thought of the video so I can improve them. As always, I hope you have a good morning, afternoon, or evening. So long for now.